one, check two. moments to come on into the live stream. Thank you for joining us. Just going to give you a heads up, it's gonna, probably going to be a little bit hard to hear because of the wind. So I'll try to give you as many visuals and hopefully you'll be able to ask some questions as well. Got a See if I can get a few more people in. Gonna... All right, how's it going, everybody? Oops, let me figure out my gimbal situation here. Try to figure that out. How's it going, everybody? Thank you for joining me. My name is Interpreter Ryan, and I am an interpreter here in the North Coast Redwoods District, and I'm talking to you from Humboldt Redwoods State Park. And it is springtime, and I can definitely smell that in the air. My allergies are acting up. And um, it's usually a really nice time for people to come out, and so I know it's, it's pretty sad for me to not see people coming out here, um, but it does tell me that people are doing a really good job of sheltering in place, that people are doing a good job following the the safety guidelines and and being healthy and that's really important i think that uh it it is going to be um an uncomfortable short-term um action that will have long-term benefits so hopefully if we all work together we are maintaining social distancing if you are coming out to the parks you're really making sure to avoid crowding you're washing your hands all the time and of course staying indoors whenever you can we do these practices then we'll be able to uh, open up these parks we'll be able to visit these places again and, um, and be able to see you all um, enjoying these environments and going camping and all of that so uh, thank you everyone for, for being uh, respectful of those guidelines now uh, I am talking to you for those of you who are just coming in I'm talking to you from Humboldt Redwood State Park from here on the banks of the Eel River let me adjust my setting here so you can actually see the river a little bit. There we go. This is the South Fork of the Eel River and it's right where it moves into the main stem of the Eel River. It's the confluence. So we're a little downstream of where we were last week. And uh, I wanted to come out here because we got some good rain this weekend. We had a lot of rain. And I saw some snow up on the mountains nearby like Black Lassic, which is a pretty prominent mountain um, that you can kind of see on the Eel River. It's covered in snow now. And um, you can see that this river is looking a little muddy. Good sign that there has been some rain. This is one of the oldest, um, I'm sorry, one of the oldest. This is one of the most erosive or most erosion prone rivers in North America for its size. So it um, can produce, uh, it can produce an, just an unbelievable amount of soil or an unbelievable amount of sediment that comes down here. It can carry from the mountains here that are all pretty loosely conglomerated. There are ancient seafloor that have been all jumbled up here. And, uh, and it carries it down out here to the ocean. It makes our coastline um, pretty muddy out there, but it does provide some really great sand for our beaches. So this river system is conveying a lot of sand and sediment out to the ocean, a lot of nutrients as well. And um, the reason also I want to the, the reason I'm talking to you today is to talk a little bit about the changes of our season. So here on the Eel River this time of year, uh, we get our we get a, a pretty windy shift that starts to happen. That's one of the reasons it might be a little bit hard to hear me as we get these gusts of wind. This is a Mediterranean climate which means that there are two seasons here. In most of California, we have a wet season and a dry season. We are exiting our wet season as we move into the dry season. So whereas some places of, of North America and of the United States have four seasons, you've got your, your winter and your spring and your summer and your fall, 
we really only have two. We don't get a lot of cold, cold winters down here at low elevation. We don't get um, maybe the same fall colors that you get on the East Coast, especially in New England. Here, it's pretty much rain from up here in Humboldt County, November to about April. And then the spigot shuts off and it's dry, pretty bone dry. Um, we get fog that comes up and the fog usually makes its way from the coast about uh, maybe maybe 10 or 20 miles inland and that's about it. So two distinct seasons here. And we are just reaching kind of that transition between the, the wet season and the dry season. And things get kind of unstable. We get these powerful gusts of wind in the afternoon as the earth is tilting and, um, and we're starting to get changes in the ocean currents. And all of these cool little sh things that are happening globally are affecting this area locally whether it's um, the amount of muddy water that we have here, whether it's the kind of wind that we get here or the fog. So as these winds that come off, these, these winds that we get from the Northwest this time of year, as they begin to just blow and blow for the next month or so, they're causing the ocean to kind of turn up, especially right off our coast. They're causing cold water to kind of well up. It's creating this circular, this circular pattern where that cold water begins to come up. And as that cold water comes up, it, it brings a bunch of nutrients right off of our coast from the deep. And that brings lots of, lots of sea mammals and fish and birds. And it's just a huge explosion. Uh, a lot of phytoplankton. They call it a super bloom at times when these phytoplankton just kind of begin to explode in population. Just had a little landslide over there. It's gonna take a minute. Probably hard to see, um, but you might see some waves over there. So I just watched a piece of the cliff just calve off, and you can kind of see the disruption kind of in this area. A piece of cliff just calved right off and caused just this little bit of, uh, of wave action over there. You don't see that every day. Wow, that was wild. That is a, a perfect example of the kind of erosion that happens here in this area because this is all very loose material. This is ancient seafloor that's just kind of been jammed up as our, our um, ocean plate is, is subducting under our continental plate and it's pushing all of this seafloor up and just thrusting it up into um, this mountain range, the coast range. So keep an eye out, see if anything else happens there. No ground shaking that I know of. Do we see, a, 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 there was a question here, a decrease in the amount of fish due to climate change. And I would say Climate change is one of those complicated things where it is it is so intricate in all of the ways that um, it can affect our ecosystems and the processes. I do not know about a decrease in fish because of climate change, but I do know that there is decrease in cold water because of climate change because our snowpack in California has decreased. And so we have less snow than we did historically. And that reduction of snowpack means that there's less cold water um, melting and percolating into our streams in the summertime. And, it's, and the summertime is critical for fish because those little animals that are migrating down from the stream and those um, they eat cold water as a way to keep disease away and just for their own survival. So a increase in food temperatures globally means that there's less snow, means there's less cold water available for these fish, and um, maybe changes in rain patterns might affect get our rains when our rainy season starts again and they come up here in the fall and if there is a lot of um if there's not a lot of rain then it's going to be hard for them to go up into the tri tributaries where they came from if there is rain at the wrong time then it can just kind of blow out all their all their nests they make their nests of, out of gravel and if we get huge huge rain events sometimes those nests can get blown out from from uh, high, high flows. So I don't know if that really reduces the population 
but it can be it can cause an impact so climate change definitely has an impact on these salmon's population i don't know exactly how it's affected the numbers the numbers of salmon in this river system have already been so so affected by mostly by um timber harvesting activities in the past which caused a lot of problems which is one thing i wanted to bring up you know i mentioned that you have the, the cold ocean currents that happen kind of mainly in the, the summertime that's creating this cold water there's a high pressure barrier off of our off of our coast that keeps rain systems away but that allows fog to come in because all that air is passing over that cold water right out there off the coast that fog is insulating this area keeping it cool but then we get a similar event in the fall like we have now where we have lots of wind the, the climate starts to feel unstable and then our rain comes back jet stream. The jet stream is um, basically this, this really low pressure river, atmospheric river that comes um, from usually kind of a lot up in the north, kind of in the Arctic area, um, and makes its way down here, dips down here and brings lots of rain. Well, back in 1955 and back in 1964 as well, we had this combination of snow that happened early and then an atmospheric river of warmer rainwater that came. And that warm water hit all that snow, dumped a whole bunch of rain, melted all that snow, and created an enormous flood system. There was the Christmas flood of 1964 that inundated this environment. In fact, this here, um, where I'm standing, is called Dyerville, um, this is Dyerville Bar. And there used to be a town called Dyerville here. And I believe it was, um, I'm not sure if it was the 55 or the 60, but many communities were taken out by both of those flood events, nine years apart. And in fact, it was the 1964 flood which destroyed um, all kinds of bridges and road systems and communities. And that's what brought my grandparents out to this area. My grandpa helped rebuild some of the bridges in this environment in 1965 after that and um, so that was how my family came in this area was because of responding to that that flood system and um, it was because of that atmospheric river that we get in that in that rainy season that lower pressure that allows that that jet stream to come in so in a way I am really connected to this area because I feel like the reason I'm here has a lot to do with the climate and with the natural systems of this place. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for, at least I wouldn't be in this environment. Where they came from, if it wasn't for that system, if it wasn't for this Mediterranean climate and that jet stream that comes down and brings all that rain in the winter and fills up these rivers and sometimes causes catastrophic floods and catastrophic landslides. So I wanna thank you so much for joining me, everybody. Thank you for your participation, um, and make sure to follow us at um, follow us on North Coast Redwoods or California State Park North Coast Redwoods. Follow us on Instagram as well. Um, we're at North Coast Redwoods there on Instagram as well. And um, stay safe. Thank you so much for following all this, the, the guidelines of social distancing, sheltering in place. We're going to flatten this curve together, and then you're going to be out here in these parks. You're going to be camping. You're going to be enjoying yourselves again. We can't wait to have you all. Make sure that we can all be safe and make that possible. So thank you so much, everyone, for joining me. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. Join us tomorrow. Join us the next day, 3 o'clock. Every day, we're doing these live streams. And hope to see you soon. Bye, everyone.